All right, to get started, make sure you got two blocks. We'll start with butterfly. Feet together, knees out wide. Just let those knees fall and then rest your hand on your chest. Feel the rise and fall of your stomach. With every inhale, feel your rib cage expand out laterally. With every exhale, feel that rib cage internally rotate and get a little bit smaller. Breathing in through the nose, exhaling out the mouth. Find a nice, easy cadence. Allow yourself to become more and more present with your body, with your thoughts, with your breath. Today's video is going to focus on activating all of the different muscles in your body. So maybe start to feel connected to all the different parts, feet, hands, your butt. Then you're going to rock up. You're going to find a block, squeeze it between your knees and then just rock side to side just little gentle rocks you don't have to go too far use your arms to help anchor yourself so that those knees don't go too far try and keep your hands elbows all against the floor then rock forward into a boat pose so chest lifted Shins parallel to the floor, reach your arms forward, starting to wake up the core and starting to activate in through the transverse abdominis, then lower down into a hollow hold. Then lower down, find a glute bridge, heels into the floor, hips up, starting to activate through the glutes and the hamstrings. Then lower down, come back to boat. sure you got a nice easy breath then you lower down into hollow hold yeah and you can reach those arms overhead that's going to add a challenge for this hollow hold then take the block out going to do a single leg glute bridge so press into your right heel left leg goes straight up you want to feel this in your right hamstring and your right glute starting to activate and warm up the muscles in the back side of your legs switch legs out left heel into the ground right leg straight up Left glute, left hamstring, getting warmed up now. Nice, easy breath. Lower down. Then you'll rock up, flip over, and find an extended child's pose. Sit back on your heels, big toes to touch, knees out wide to make space for your torso, and then reach your body long. Spread those fingers out wide. From child's pose. Eventually make your way up to a tabletop position, shoulders over wrists, hips over knees, and then we'll go through a few rounds of protraction, retraction. So keep your arms pressed into the floor, straight with your arms, and then allow your chest to come towards the floor, and as it comes towards the floor, those shoulders come back. As you push away from the floor, you protract, puff up the space in your upper back. Just warming up those shoulder joints so that we can go into some upper body movements. And then we're going to go into some spinal segmentation. So really press the floor away, cat or camel your spine. And then from that position, start to wave your spine. Every single spine is a different segment. You see the chin comes up. Then as that chin comes down, hits the center of your chest. Then that chest puffs up. See the lower body is not moving just yet. It's last to come. Then that pelvis tucks underneath. Then you flow it back the other way. That low back starts to arch start to lose a little bit of that puff in your back as it flattens out and then last to rise is that chin all the way up go through this a few times try and think eight to ten maybe even 15 seconds each wave through take this really slow it's going to give you a little bit more control over the different parts of your spine a little bit different from a normal cat cow where you're moving as one from extension into flexion of the spine this one's segmenting it out from there, you'll find a downward facing dog. Press the floor away, alternate those heels. Knees can bend slightly if you need. Try and get those hips up a little bit higher. One big breath in, a big breath out. Another big breath in, big breath out. Shift forward into a forward fold. Soft bend in your knees and find a block. You're going to squeeze the block between your hands, come to a standing position, hands at heart center, squeeze in that block, 
starting to activate the front side of your body, the chest muscles. Then as you extend out and in, keep squeezing that block. As you extend overhead, you might feel some resistance in your shoulders. Just working through, strengthening and activating the different muscles as you go up and overhead, out and forward. Take this slow, feel it in the shoulders, feel it in the chest. If you feel a little bit of tension as you go up overhead, you don't need to reach all the way overhead. Make sure that you're not extending through your low back. From here, you fold forward, find a halfway lift, flat spine, press that block into your shins. That's gonna help ignite and warm up the back side of your upper back and shoulders. From there, step back, high plank, shoulders over wrists, push up, lower down, reach your arms back, find a locus, big breath in as you reach your hands back, palms facing the floor, triceps trying to touch, and then lower down, hands under your chest, toes tuck, big breath in, exhale, you're going to push up, slowly lower down, five, four, three, two, one, hold here isometrics then you're going to push back into a downward facing dog from downward facing dog shift forward into a high plank we'll go through this two more times from high plank step forward forward fold find a block again then you'll rise press that block with both hands press it out bring it back in press it overhead lower down press it out one thing about pushing overhead if getting directly overhead is tough with your shoulders, just push up at an angle, almost as if you were doing an incline chest press. And don't let that chest flare, lower back arch as you're doing it. Forward fold, then halfway lift, press the block into your shins, isometric to help pull those shoulders down, get the lats working. Big breath in, exhale, forward fold, then step your feet back, high plank. Lower down to your stomach, reach your arms back, locus, inhale, lift, keep the chin down in line with your spine, pull your upper back shoulder blades together, triceps coming together, hands underneath your shoulders now, tuck your toes, big breath in, exhale, strong concentric push up here, then slowly lower down, five, four, three, two, one, now you're holding. Holding 90 degrees with the elbows, push up, downward facing dog. All right, we'll go through this one more time from downward facing dog. Step forward, forward, fold, grab the block. Notice how I grabbed it long ways. You can do that if you want a little bit of a different squeeze with that block. Pushing out, pushing up overhead. Really try and exhale as you extend your arms out from away from your body or overhead. That's to help keep the rib cage down, keep the shoulders and hips aligned. If you feel a little tightness, don't push through any pain. Then forward fold, flip your block, and you're going to press it into your shins in this halfway lift, pressing the block into your shins to help activate the lats in kind of a isometric straight arm lat pull down. Then you're going to step back into a high plank, shoulders over your wrist, squeeze the quads, squeeze the glutes, lower down to your stomach, hands underneath your shoulders, tuck your toes, big breath in. Exhale, push up, slowly lower down, five, four, three, two, one, hold it 90 degrees, really activate in here, stay strong, then push back into a downward facing dog. Pedal out those heels, take a couple rounds of breath in that downward facing dog. If you need to switch it out, grab some water, now's the time. Then to get ready, we'll come into a forward fold, soft bend in the knees, and then come up to a chair, arms reaching overhead, feet hip width apart. As you can see, I'm almost in a 90 degree squat. Tuck that pelvis underneath, make sure your low back isn't in too much extension. Then come up onto your toes ever so slightly, then come onto your heels. You'll feel different muscles activating as you move your weight from your toes to your heels. Now come onto the outsides of your feet. Drive those knees away, turn on your abductors, and then maybe pull those knees in. You're actually not pulling them to touch together. You're just trying to use those adductors and abductor muscles. Then step your feet back, swing your arms back, 
just tapping that leg really working that left side leg once you do five times here step back into a high plank push up inhale upward facing dog exhale downward facing dog from downward facing dog look forward setting up for chair again coming up into it sit in it a little bit you got flexion in your knees and your ankles arms sweep back tap that left foot back now you're working the right leg we got three we got four and after that fourth one plant your hands step that left foot back into a high plank push up upward facing dog exhale downward facing dog now we're going to change it up going into this next sequence big round of breath in through the nose as you lift your right leg, keep your hips square. Use that right glute to lift that right heel a little bit higher. Then drive that foot forward into a low lunge. Inhale, open twist to the right. Keep that left hand planted. Exhale, lower down. And from here, really anchor into that right foot. And then rise into a crescent lunge. So get deep into that lunge. Right knee over your right ankle, squeeze your left glute, soft bend in your left knee, lift that left heel. Arms reaching overhead, then you're going to hinge forward, more and more weight goes into that right leg. Then plant your hand, step back, find a side plank, right hand as your base, left arm reaching up. You can always drop that bottom knee down if you need to, but from here we'll go into a fallen star, so kick that right leg out. Pull that hip up a little bit higher. Then you're going to drop that knee in underneath you and lift the left leg so you can work the outer hip area. Ton of activation going on through this left side. Stay active. You're going to spin, come to a high plank, push back into a downward facing dog. Then we'll lift the left leg, get that left heel high, squeeze that left glute to get there even through both hands, then drive that knee forward. Step your left foot underneath your chest, plant your right hand, inhale, open, twist to the left. Keep the left knee driving in underneath your chest, then plant your hand. Make sure that left foot's really gripping in, you're going to want it to be strong here. And reach your arms up overhead, torso lifts, left knee over your left ankle, squeeze your right glute. That right hip flexor is going to get more of a stretch when you squeeze that right glute. And hinge forward more and more weight into that left leg. Then plant your hands, slide that left foot down. Left hand as your base, right arm reaching up. Side plank on the left side. Start to activate now through the obliques. Now you're going to stick that left leg out, fall in triangle. Then bring that left knee underneath your hip. And then lift the right leg. Now you're working through that right side of the hip. All you need to do is get that right leg out parallel to the floor and you'll be feeling it. Step back, push back into a downward facing dog. All right, from downward facing dog, take a big breath in, big breath out. You'll step forward, feet behind your hands in a forward fold, and then you'll find that chair again. This time sit in a little bit deeper, hands behind your head, elbows out wide. Feel like you're pulling those elbows back. You can also just rest them on your shoulders almost as if you were in a front squat we'll bring those hands together continue to hold here and you're going to sit deeper into a squat plant your left hand open that right arm up get through a little bit of thoracic upper back mobility switch hands reach the left arm up then you're just going to sit down scoot your butt forward and then come to lying on your back we're going to start with some dead bugs here Right arm, left leg extends while the opposite arm and opposite knee stay pointing towards the ceiling. So the goal here is to keep that lower back as even and pressed against the mat as you can. It's all right if there's a little bit of an arch, but what you don't want is that lower back to arch a ton. You're going to have to work your rectus abdominis, those ab muscles, to keep that rib cage pulled down. From here, you're going to come to a held bicycle right knee left elbow while that right leg holds out here if you want to level this up you can lift and lower that right leg but for now let's just switch it left elbow right knee make those ankles at 90 degrees 
hold in here, left leg sticking straight out. We're just giving it five to eight seconds on each side. Really good isometric holds. Continue to breathe. If it's burning, that's all right. That's the point. Left elbow back to that right knee. Stay with it. Stay with it. You got it. And then come to lying on your back. Back to that butterfly we started in. Elbows out wide. Make it a nice, easy breath. You can feel that rib cage rise. With every inhale, every exhale. Use your core to get there. Then I'll have you flip over, come back to a downward facing dog. Make sure you got your blocks out in front of your mat. I'm just putting one on both sides for this demonstration. So be in downward facing dog. Inhale, lift that right leg high. Exhale, step that right foot forward, low lunge. Then we're gonna drive into that right foot. Find a one-legged mountain. Tons of balance, tons of strength required here. Left knee 90 degrees, soft bend in your right knee. Left ankle pulling up. And from here, you're gonna rock forward into a warrior three. Hinge forward, arms reach along, left heel kicks back and up. Use that left glute. Then you're gonna go five single leg squats. Each time, bring that left knee to that calf. There's three, you can use the floor or a block if you need. Last one, feeling that glute, feeling that hamstring. If it's burning, that's all right, that's the point. Find that soft bend in that right leg again. Keep your hips square and then come down, give yourself a little break. Now you got one block. You're gonna put your right foot on that block so that you can keep the left foot elevated from the floor. You'll see what we're doing here in a second. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tap that left heel forward five times. So a lot of control, a lot of strength being built here, really activating the right hip muscles on the outside of the hip. Right glutes working, hamstrings working. Now you're just tapping back. These are micro movements you do in athletic situations or just breaking them down. That's three, that's four. Then we're gonna come out wide. All the while you're keeping that right leg straight and you're just sliding that left leg out, tapping it and coming back in. And then last but not least, isometric hold here. Lift that left leg. Now both your glutes should be squeezing. Both your glutes should be on fire. Right one's working, left one's working to lift that left leg. And then just spin open, take that block out, and find a nice strong warrior two. Arms reach out wide, right knee opens up towards your pinky toe, back left leg is straight with that left foot parallel to the back of your mat. All right, now here's where it gets a little bit challenging. We're gonna sit in this warrior two for about a minute. And what I want you to feel is all the different muscles that are engaged in here. And I also want you to feel how moving your body, little micro movements, little micro activations, feels and makes this pose different. So feel like you're pulling your right heel towards your left heel. Feel like you're squeezing your adductors together. Feel like you're pulling that right knee away. Feel like you're pulling your belly button in. Feel what happens if you squeeze your glute forward. What happens if you just close your eyes and sit in your body here. Warrior two is such a familiar pose. We do it so many times in yoga, yet we can just go through the motions. We can just make it monotonous. We can make it the same. But just by being aware, you can learn to feel things differently. From here, spin open into a big star. Reach your arms long, feet parallel to each other. Then we're gonna skandasana, side lunge into that right leg. Really feel that right knee over that right ankle, work in the outside of that right hip and that quad. Then you're gonna spin to the left, find a low lunge, step your foot back, come into a downward facing dog. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Inhale, lift that left leg high. Exhale, drive that left foot forward, low lunge here. Make sure that that left foot's anchored in, feeling the toes grip into the floor. You're gonna want it as you drive into that left foot. One leg in mountain, got a little wiggle there, that's all right. Just come into it, right knee at 90 degrees, right ankle at 90 degrees. Find a soft bend in that left knee, arms reaching up, nice easy breathing right here. Then you're gonna exhale as you hinge forward into warrior three. Soft bend in that left knee, still right heel lifting up. Then we're gonna do the same five taps we did on the other side. You can use the floor or a block if you need. Otherwise, keep those hands at heart center. 
And man, that left glute, those left hammies are going to be feeling it. Reach those arms long again once more. Continue to hold, really kick that right heel up. And then let that foot come down. That left glute might be singing a little bit. That's all right. Now we're going to find your block. Put your left foot on the block. And we'll do the same thing we did on the other side. Tapping that heel forward. One, two, three, four. Small little micro movements. Five. Then you're going to tap it back. Just tapping it back, almost as if you were getting into a sprinting position or maybe a skating position. That's three. That's four. Just a small little bend to that left knee. Then we're going to tap it out to the right. You lose that balance. That's all right. Come back to it. Really anchor into that left heel. That'll help you feel it more in the glute as opposed to maybe the quad or the knee. Take it slow. Then last bit, lift that right leg going to get the right glute right hip working you'll also obviously have the left side burning as you lift and hold here then spin open find a warrior two slide that block out we don't need it anymore left knee bent at 90 degrees back leg straight reach your arms long and we got a minute here again a minute here to feel this warrior two on the other side so many times in yoga or in life we're expecting what's coming next what's coming next it's all about being present in this present moment, in this position. If you can remove the desire to always expect what's coming next or always be thinking, oh, what's the next pose? What's the next thing I got on my agenda? And just be present in this pose. Be present wherever you're at with whatever project you're working on or whatever you're practicing, whether it's in sports or in yoga or at work. Just give yourself that ability to be present with whatever it is that you're doing and get into that flow state. So that's what we're working on here. If you close your eyes, you can feel it more and more in the body, playing with all the different activations in this position. Here for a little bit longer. And then find that big star, just like we did on the other side, feet parallel. Then you're going to slide to the left, side lunge into that left leg. Should be feeling that left hip, left glute, left quad. Then you're going to spin forward onto that right leg, step back into a downward facing dog. All right, a few more minutes left here from downward facing dog. Come down to your stomach, do a few rounds of cobra. Little to no weight in your hands, lifting up through your chest. Using your upper back to keep that torso upright. Exhale, lower down. Coming up again. Little to no weight in your hands. Now you're extending in through the arms. Continue to hold, lower down. Then tee out your arms and just go a few times. Bend that right knee, kick over. Bend the left knee, kick over. Try and keep your hands pressed against the floor. Goal posting those elbows. And then you're just rocking back and forth. You can open up through the chest a little bit if you extend that left arm. Pull the floor away. Flip over to the other side. Straight through that right arm. Keep that left elbow, left arm really anchoring in to help support you. Then I gotta flip my hat so I can go down into a puppy pose, arms reach long, and then you're gonna connect your hands at the nape of your neck. Grip your elbows in and pull away from your elbows, trying to bring your chest towards your knees. Stretch out the triceps. Lats also attach right up at the top of the tricep. So you're really working into the shoulder here, where sometimes the lats can get a little bit tight and keep you from going overhead with your arms. Rock forward. Hands pressing into the floor, you find a downward facing dog. Then you're going to come through and step forward so that you can lie on your back. Just flip around and from your back, cross your right ankle over your left knee. Bring that left ankle to 90 degrees, really drive that left knee to your chest, working on a stretch on the outside of your right hip. You can interlace your fingers behind your left hamstring to pull that knee in a little bit closer if you want. Otherwise, just hang here. And then switch it out, left ankle over your right knee. Try and pull that right knee in towards your chest a little bit more. Just relaxing and breathing here. 
almost done. Did a lot of work on the glutes, on the hamstrings, on the glute meats. I want to make sure, give them a little stretch at the end so you feel good and ready after this activation flow. In through the nose, out through the mouth. Almost there. If you want to spend a little bit more time on each side, give yourself 60 seconds on each supine figure four. Then come to a happy baby. One last little stretch for the hammies. Bring those knees into your shoulders. Try and keep your shoulders, your hips, and your mid back all on the floor as you do this. It's alright if you grab your ankles. Not necessarily needing to grab your feet here. Then to finish, extend your legs. Relax your arms. Final Shavasana. 